Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Tennille and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Whitney. I'm Tennille. And today we are taking a look at Arcadia of My Youth, also known as Space Pirate Captain Harlock, Arcadia of My Youth. Yeah. From 1982, Toei Animation. Japan. Japan. Well, I think this is probably one of my top favorite movies from this creator, just for the simple fact that there is nothing that just makes me absolutely hate it. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. Yeah. But it's, it's crime is it's boring. More well, than it's offensive to my sensibilities. Right. Yeah, it's not terribly engaging. It's also not a terribly good origin story, which is kind of what this is going for. Yeah, it's supposed to be an origin story. And, uh, you know, this is about Captain Harlock and how he got started. Have you ever wondered why he is how he is? Well, this movie doesn't answer those questions. I was about to say not really, but tell me anyway. <laughs> you want to know how he got his costume and his boat and... Yeah? Well, this movie answers all those questions, but it doesn't answer why this character is the way he is. Because he's already his own self when the movie starts. It's just this movie shows us how he acquires his boat and his costume and loses an eye and other unimportant things. Yeah, they're all very surface level things. Mm -hmm. Like... Things that you would kind of expect to happen in any natural story, the things that would happen gradually over time, you know, like maybe he got the boat and then, you know, years later he kind of adopted the outfit and, you know, through worn, torn battles he got the scar. But no, like it all happens at within once. Within a week. <laughs> yeah. Everything happens to him within one week of his life. And the funny thing is that, you know, for this being a movie about him, he's really not the focus of the film. He, like, he is the main character doing things, but he's not actually the one progressing the plot. No, not really. Like, he doesn't have much agency here. He's not shown doing a whole lot of cool things. He's just kind of, like, along for the ride. Yeah, and honest, sometimes yeah. he makes commentary on it that I guess would be typical of his character. I'm not super familiar with this character, so I wouldn't know. But, yeah, like, he, he doesn't, doesn't do impact much. the story much. It's not like, oh, my God, because he's here, he was able to save the day. Actually, it's the opposite. Because he's here, they still lost. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things where oftentimes when people write stories, the main character warps the universe around them. Mm -hmm. This is not true here. And it could have done with a little bit more warping around the main character, you know? Exactly. Because you're kind of wondering, well, what's the point to this? Yeah. Why were we watching a movie about this character when it was definitely more so about this other character or these other characters doing things. Or even just this event going on. Mm -hmm. Why is this guy the main character? Yeah. yeah. So, I guess, do you want to talk about what the events of the film are? All right, let's do some level of plot synopsis. Yes. All right, so, Earth has been taken over by green alien people that have... Uh, th their eyebrows grow into their hair, and sometimes it grows below their eyes, too. I think that's kind of neat. Like... I'm just For confused, character design, though, that's fine. I'm just confused, though, because this takes place in the same universe. As Galaxy Express 3-9. Right. Mm -hmm. And in those movies, they establish that Earth is taken over by, like, robots. Robot people. Yeah. yeah. So, like... Sometime between this movie and that movie, the green people get ousted and then the robot people take over, I guess. I guess. Geez. Earth just really gets taken over all the time, apparently. Yeah, in Earth this universe. sucks. Uh huh. The leader of the alien people, I honestly forgot to write down his name, but he's a noble uh, man who does good decisions and, like, no, no, we don't shoot them out of the sky. That would make the people revolt more for us. Instead, we will have a honorable battle to the death and things like that this is our villain he's 
pretty unmemorable. Yeah, I. He basically only is important in the beginning and the end. Mm-hmm. He's the one who tells Harlock to go on this mission. No. 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 Oh, okay. No. Sorry, I'm misremembering things yeah. then. Okay. Harlock himself mm-hmm. is some sort of failed human military captain, and the beginning of the movie is him having to surrender his ship to the green aliens because he lost in a fight. Okay. In a space fight or something. But he's still part... Harlock is offered a job, but he says no. He does not want to work for the green aliens. So he's just a private citizen. And so he immediately joins up or rejoins up. It's very unclear for being an origin story Mm -hmm. uh, with the human... Resistance? Yeah, the human resistance. And uh, the leader of the human resistance is Maya. She's your unth degree blonde lady with hair past her butt (sighs) that this guy cannot draw anything else for. Like, there are other women in this movie. But like, any, they're background characters. Yeah, but any important female character has long hair that goes past their butt. They have the same face. They're thin as a stick. They all look Big practically eyelashes. identical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Maya is the <sighs> one that is the leader of the human resistance. And she does, like, a radio broadcast to bring hope to the humans of the Earth. Yes. Ooh. While he's here on Earth, he also meets Toshiro who is a small guy with a big hat. And hilariously enough, we've met this character before. Yeah, he, he was, was in, in the first Triple Nine He was in the Express. first Galaxy Express 3-9 where he died. Yeah. Because of space cancer or something. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is where he meets Harlock, which is important because uh, he is like... A scientist, and he builds an entire giant spaceship. He He's the one that builds Harlock's iconic ship by himself, yeah. and nobody noticed. Yeah, somehow. Uh-huh. Is this the point where we also get to talk about the, the ancestors <laughs> yes. storyline? Yes. So we're going to briefly uh. stop talking about the present because, for some reason, they both get picked up and... They do some sort of science bullshit where they scan their DNA and find out that their ancestors knew each other. Have shared memories. Shared memories. So we get to see a flashback. The first flashback is actually how the movie starts. And it's showing Phantom Harlock, the first... Uh huh. Flies planes and he tries to fly past a very big plane in, or a very big mountain in Chile, and it is presented as a laughing ghost woman. Yeah. <laughs> His son or grandson, Harlock the Second, Phantom Harlock the Second. Uh huh. Is a Nazi. Yeah. Yay. And. His excuse for fighting on that side of the war is, well, we kind of owed some people some things, so I'm working for this government. Which is the wishy-washiest answer. Excuse? Excuse for making your protagonist's... Grandparent? Great, 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 great grandparent a Nazi. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I, I did see that there was, like, some trying to excuse it as, like, Phantom Harlock the Second has the morals of like ancient Japan's feudalism, like I owe my lord a service kind of mm-hmm. thing. But like that's still stupid. What like oh, it's very that stupid. doesn't apply here at all. And Anyways. also maybe just don't choose to make your character a Nazi. <laughs> yeah. So Tochiro. Mm-hmm is the name of Toshiro's great-grandpa. Also living in this time. Living in this time. He is Japanese, and he is just in Germany working on, like, gadgets and shit. Plain shit. Yeah. So Phantom Harlock II takes 
Tochiro to the Switzerland border because he is technically just a civilian and not part of the military and gets him across the border and then he go turns back around and gets shot to death by uh, the Allied forces because, you know, he's a Nazi. Right. And, like, this is right at the end of the war or whatever. Yeah. And as he's walking away, Tochiro's like... I'm going to make sure that our great, great, great grandchildren love each other or best friends or intertwined. And, and I'm like, bro, I is it gay that you wish that your grandchildren would met, kiss. met and would <laughs> kiss? <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. It, like their whole interaction feels very like homoerotic. Oh, extremely. Yeah. Like, but he's like... I make an undying vow, wish, whatever, that our descendants, descendants will meet will and be meet. best friends. Yes. So I guess that's the reason for this plot. The main sure. thing you need to know about him is that he was working specifically on some kind of like aiming, aiming device in aiming, the plane. Yeah, some sort of aiming apparatus. This will come back later. Wink. <laughs> This is foreshadowing. Yes. All right. Anyways, back to the future present. Mm-hmm. There is a different human planet called Tokargan or Tarkoga. Right. Something like that. There is a group of humans who were born on Tarkargan who are working for the green aliens here on Earth. Mm-hmm. And they overhear that the green aliens are going to go blow up Tokarga. And that upsets them, obviously. obviously. So they ask Harlock to go to Tokarga and stop this and or save as many people as possible right. from their home planet. Uh, so he takes off in a ship with Toshiro and one Tokargan guy and another blonde lady la mime who is an alien who also has blonde blonde hair that falls below her ass she is an she is a she is one of the characters that is a recurring character on from captain harlock of course so she is part of his ship's crew do we also mention the other oh blonde yeah. lady who's like the Esmeralda's. robot secretary well that that is the 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 robot secretary is La Mime. Okay. But she's apparently just an alien, but not a robot. Right. But she was working for the green people. She's the one that technically overheard it and let the Tokargans know. And then she goes along with Captain Harlock and she just becomes a part of his crew. Yeah. But Esmeralda's. Esmeralda's, who we also met in Galaxy Express 3.9, is a lady with long hair that flows below her butt, but her hair is orange. Wow, she's a redhead. Spicy. <laughs> wow. And in this movie, she's not a pirate yet either. She's just a free trader. But she still knows Harlock. Yeah. The funny thing is, for an origin story, it doesn't tell how these characters met. They already just know each other before the movie starts. Right. It's like, okay, all right. She is here. She does nothing. She yeah. is like... She chats with people, like, twice, and then mm -hmm. she just kind of is like, all right, good luck. She also gets captured at the same time that Maya does, and they both serve as, like... A bargaining chip. Bargaining chips. Yeah. So it's like, why are both of them here? They don't both need to be here. Well, so that she can get her scar. Oh, yes, yes. Because we have to fill in... How all of these characters got every defining feature all within a week of yeah, their lives. exactly. Yeah, uh, at one point in here, Harlock gets shot, which is how he loses his eye. Also, his girlfriend Maya is the one that made his suit. Uh, we already established that he got the ship from Toshiro, who made it by himself. <laughs> this giant ass indestructible spaceship. You're really just, not going to get over that, are you? No, that just like can crash through so many solid earth solid earth and layers he, of buildings and cement yeah because he just had like this basement underground he was building it in this massive right underneath ship. the alien spaceport <laughs> yeah and then when they're like all right it's time for us to go we got to go now they just crash through the layers of the earth and like the spindly them. wing bits and the gun turrets and everything perfectly it's fine. fine it's fine. absolutely fine <laughs> 
Like, I get that it's a cool visual, but, like, it... it uh, Suspension Whatever. of disbelief. Suspension to disbelief is already very low when the movie is incredibly boring and we're already an hour and 15 minute into this two hour and 10 movie and we're only now getting on the spaceship to go do anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The pacing is slow. So anyways, they take the spaceship to the other planet and when they get there, everybody's practically dead already. They pick up one dying child and like four guys. Oh, and don't forget... Captain Harlock's bird. Yeah, he also picks up the the parrot thing that he has. It's just there and just becomes part of the crew. It's not acknowledged. It's just there. So this is a point where I want to mention the one part of the movie that I think has a little bit of heart to it. It, it made me feel at least an emotion. So, you know, that's something. And that's that... Back on Earth, there's a guy originally from... Tokarga. Tokarga. And he's the leader of that group of Earth-based Tokargans. Yes. And he... so he wants to lead a resistance against the green alien people. Mm -hmm. But he's scared to do so because he has a younger brother and sister still living on Tarkuga. Yeah, Tarkoga. Tarkoga. Sorry. It's a weird name. Tokarga. Tokarga. All right. And, you know, so he's like, Harlock, please find my brother and sister. Bring them back to me or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, then Harlock leaves. The resistance ends up kind of fighting the green aliens anyway. And he dies. Yes. And then when Harlock gets to the planet, he finds the guy's brother and sister. And they're dead. And, and they're already dead. The only reason he knows it's the siblings is because the bird is perched. They're repeating their last words. Yeah, and their last words are something really cheesy, like, Oh, if only brother was here. Brother, please come back and save our planet. Yes. <laughs> it's really dumb and cheesy. Really, really, you know, not not anything to write home about, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So, like, I kind of feel where that, like, story was going. Could have been an going. emotional beat. That could have been, like, an interesting part of the story. It falls flat in several cases, and the story doesn't put a heavy focus on it in particular when there's all this other, like, fan service -y stuff. We, we have to explain establish. how we got the bird. That's more important than these dead children. I know, right? And so it's just like, <laughs> movie, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole fact that this is called Arcadia of My Youth, and, like, Arcadia is the name of the ship, or the plane, or the other plane. It's the constant name of the plane, or the robot that what do travel places that all of the Harlocks use. And you feel a lot more of the emotional connection between the aircraft, I guess, mm -hmm. between his, like, grand ancestors or whatever. Mm-hmm. Than you do with Harlock and this spaceship. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit about this spaceship in particular. It's, it's just, just kind it's of like, cool, spaceship. a ship. Also, I love how everyone was very on point in knowing that skulls were the motif. Yes, yes, he's he's got his branding down pretty pat. For like, no one talking to each other, because Maya gives him the skull costume. Toshiro makes a skull ship without knowing. Uh-huh. It, like, everybody just kind of knows skulls are the thing. Before he even, like, we, like, when we see him for the first time, before he has his costume, he's still wearing, like, a pirate getup. Yeah, well, I mean, like I think that's supposed to be, like, his military getup. But there's a skull on the collar. Exactly! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very silly. Well, anyways, they get these, like, five people off the planet, and mm -hmm. then the planet gets McHeck and exploded. Which... Can I just say... Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm going to get yes. into. Yes, yes. We were having this discussion because we were bored. Yeah. Why is it that bad guys always blow up planets? I get, like, the devastation factor of it. But doesn't that just kind of, like, fuck everybody over? Yeah, because that's not just going to fuck over that one planet. It's going to just, like, destroy the eco... Like, everything about every other close-by planet... Like, yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna gravitational alter. Yeah, it's gonna alter the gravitational pull and and rotation of like every planet mm -hmm. in that solar system. And debris 
Yeah. You're going to accidentally destroy so many other planets or moons. And if that planet is no longer gone, if it had moons, those are just going to go fly off in random directions. And if even those don't crash into something else and start circulating some other large body of hunk in the sky, uh, that's going to fuck with their gravitational poles. Uh-huh. And it's just going to destroy their ecosystem. Like... Destroying planets is a very bad idea. Yeah. And to be clear, like, I don't actually see this as a criticism for the movie. No, this we were is just one like... Of those, this is one of those critiques that's like, why is the spaceship making noise in space? You know, like, I get it. It's because it's a movie. It's fiction. It's fine. It's for the emotional beats. It, whatever. It's not an actual complaint with this movie. It's just kind of a, we were bored by this point in the movie, so we just started having a conversation. Exactly. Because, again, this movie was two hours and ten minutes long. Yeah. On the way back to Earth, they somehow fall into some sort of space fire pit that's is pulling them in because of the density of life essence on the ship. Oh my god, I forgot about this. This is so stupid. Uh Uh-huh. So this is also characterized by the laughing ghost woman like the mountain at the beginning of the movie. See, this is his big Hurdle. hurdle to tackle, I guess. So they're giving the ship all she's got, And then the small child that they picked up dies. So the other five uh, Tokargans jump off the ship to eliminate the life essence that is on the ship that is drawing them into the fire, allowing Harlock and the two other people on the boat to escape. What the hell? What the hell is this? This is all so pointless. So his entire mission in this movie... Is a failure. ...is going to Tokargan to save anyone fails horribly. And it's not like it fails in an interesting way. There's just some bullshit life force sucking black hole thing thing to make it to make sure that he fails and it's not like he has a down moment after this Mm -hmm. where he's like i've got to shape up where this has altered me as a person it's just kind of like oh well that was a shame that's sad Mm -hmm. and it's like the solution came off screen Yeah, we don't even, like, see them make the decision to make this sacrifice. It's just like, oh, yeah, those people, they jumped off. Mm Mm-hmm. Isn't that sad? See? Open door. They left their helmets. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. It's like, are you kidding me, movie? Come on. So they go back to Earth. Uh Uh-huh. And this is where uh, Maya and Esmeralda's are... Maya got shot at some point, so she dies in Harlock's arms here. (laughs) And then the leader of Earth is like, hey, let's have an honorable duel to the death in our spaceships out in space. Also, you're exiled from Earth forever. Yeah. So Harlock gives some sort of grand speech to the random human standing there. It's like, you can live on Earth, or you can join us as our free spirits on this spaceship. AKA, we need mooks to pilot the the, the guns. Yes. So he gets a number of people. They go up into space. I noticed how none of these people are important. Oh, no, not even a little bit. Like, they're definitely... Just random. By the character design, you're like, oh, wow, you're NPCs. Got it. (laughs) You are literally just fodder. You're not characters in this universe. Mm -hmm. So they go up. They shoot each other's ships a bunch. The bad guy's ship explodes on top of theirs, which somehow gives them a magic shield that makes energy beams bounce around their ship so that he can go and use his super duper magic indestructible ship to go blow up the rest of the fleet of the invading green alien forces and then they win someone comments you don't fight honorably and i'm just like when has he not fought honorably yeah because up to this point harlock's been pretty like 
like by the book. Like, yeah, he's going to this other planet to pick people up, but there's nothing about what he's done that's like, ooh, yeah, that gives me real pirate vibes, you know? Nothing underhanded or anything like that. He's very much so pretty honorable for a guy. Yeah, and then like he he just shows up here at the end and he's like, oh yeah, I don't I'm fight. I'm a pirate I don't now. Play. I'm it's because I'm a pirate and you should know better. It's like where where did this come from? Like none of your character arc. I say in big quotes because there hasn't been any character arc here. Mm-hmm. Has been about this. Like where did this come from? Yeah, so they blow up the fleet. They hold a funeral for the leader of the Tokargan guys and the dead Tokargan girl and uh, Maya. Maya, and they shoot them, jettison them off into space, uh-huh. and then the ship flies off to... Who cares? That's the end of the movie. Harlock's next great adventure. Sure. <laughs> Where was the first one? I, I, I don't know. This movie wants you to assume that this is, like, the first great adventure. So, yeah, like, that's that's how the movie ends. And like I said, it doesn't really answer anything about the character himself. It's really just the very cosmetic answers for, like, this is how he met this character. He very just f- ran into them. And then this is how he got his bird and how he got his eye shot out and stuff like that. It doesn't answer how he got his scar because apparently I think that's a birth... Uh, a birthmark. A birthmark because both of the, of the Phantom Harlocks have the exact have the same. exact same scar. So it must be a birthmark. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this was directed by Tomoharo Katsumata, who is the creator of all these series that mm-hmm. we haven't really cared for. <laughs> yep. Okay. It's box office numbers also listed rentals. So I'm guessing that this is just like the total. I I don't know what this number means, really. But when it told me the box office numbers for this film, it also said rentals. So try and figure that one out. Um, Made 650 million yen, which would be in today's money. Just under $5 million. Okay. Not a crazy amount, sounds like. Not a crazy success by any means. It was controversial for exactly the reason you would expect it to be. Making the one ancestor a Nazi. Oh, okay. I was like, what are we talking about? Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, even, even... Even in, in the Japan. 80, 80s Japan, people are like, why was he a Nazi? Exactly. People were like, why? <laughs> why, though? You could literally make him from any European country, anytime. Mm-hmm. Why'd you do that? That seems weird. Or, you know, he could have been Japanese. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I specifically European country because of the whole Arcadia thing, which is like a Greek callback. Okay. It's it's like a Greek god Persephone thing, I think. Okay. I don't remember the exact sure. myth behind that, but yeah. But yeah, there's so many other countries he could have been from. Right. Why that one? Oh, well, and why specifically that time period? And why World War II? Exactly. Like, unnecessary. Oh, we forgot to mention the callback at the end of the film. The oh. callback at the end of the film is that... They use that same aiming device in the spaceship to do the final battle gun, gun run. Because, like, th- this is the most boring space battle fight ever. They literally just kind of spin around, glide past each other, shoot each other a bunch, well, spin mean- around go past each other, shoot each other a bunch. It's not high action energy, zoomy woomy space fights. And it's definitely not hyper realistic, like 
Pirates of the Caribbean, two ships, mm -hmm. two galleons, like, or, crossing paths or, or whatever. Even just, like, hyper-realistic space fighting in a similar vein. Yeah. Those kind of things happen. Like, uh -huh. the later adaptations of Yamato mm -hmm. and other things like that are trying to be as realistic as possible with their space fights. And well, this is neither. And there's a great way that you can, like, build up tension between each time, like, a ship is turning around mm -hmm. and getting ready to fire at the other ship or whatever. And, like, this movie doesn't bother doing that. It's just kind of like, all right, now i got to wait uh, 30 seconds for us to turn this thing around and... Uh, do it again. Do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And then another thing is that apparently the TV show already had an origin story for Harlock. Okay. And, like, actually has, a like, the origin of, like, when characters meet each other, like, when they meet Esmeraldas. So this is like a retcon. Yes. Like, it... The TV show already does a lot of this stuff in a different way. Uh, and so this is just, like, a non sequitur, I guess. Is it considered non-canon? Do I you know? I don't know. Okay. Because n nothing said, like, mm -hmm. which is considered more canon than the other. Because of the if TV show... If you're a show, fan of the Captain Harlock series... Let us know. Let us know. I'm sorry that we don't like the things you like. But <laughs> if you do know, tell us if... The fandom as a whole considers this movie canon or the TV show origin story the canon. Because I'm curious about that. Right. Because, like, I don't know if the creator worked directly on the TV show. Mm. So this might have been the creator's way to go back and fix, fix what he <laughs> thought was wrong in the TV show. Yeah. Like, fix his own canon. But, like, I don't know what the point of this was. Yeah. I can't imagine the TV show did it that much worse, because, like, this wasn't great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, I just want to say, if you enjoy the Captain Harlock series or the Galaxy Express 3-9 or mm -hmm. any of these mm -hmm. other things, good on you. Oh, yeah. Always, you are allowed to like whatever you want. These yeah. are obviously just our own opinions on why we don't really care for it. Uh-huh. And I always appreciate when people leave comments that are like, hey... I actually really like this. And these are some reasons why I really like this. I really connected to this thing and I really enjoy these characters and I thought this showed an interesting side of this person's personality or whatever. I really like hearing that kind of stuff because obviously you saw something in a movie that I didn't and that's okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. This just obviously wasn't for us. What I don't like seeing is when we get comments where it's like, you guys are idiots. <laughs> You just a couple of idiot furries talking about things they just don't understand. Right. I'm like, and yeah, then those sure. comments get deleted. Yeah, I'm an idiot, but you don't have to be rude and say it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are we watching next, Whitney? Uh, okay, so fun fact Arcadia of my youth uh -huh. was the halfway point of this year. Wow. All right. We're only just hitting the halfway point of this year. I this know. is our longest year yet. Oh, we still with got like some. like 36 films or something. Yeah. Yeah. So join us back here next time for our second to last Japanese film. Uh-huh. We are going to be watching Technopolis 21C. Technopolis, huh? Technopolis. Okay. Everyone's favorite subject matter. All right. Sure. See you then. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.